everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today we're going to be painting Snow White eating a red apple in acrylic paint. I'm going to be showing you everything you need to be able to create this portrait at home step by step. With me today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He tracks me with our cameras to make sure that you can see everything that I'm doing, how I'm mixing the colors, what craziness I've got going on when I'm creating my art so that you can also create this at home. This is part of our big art quest, <clears throat> excuse me, about face where we meet up weekly and we do something about doing portraits or faces and get a little bit better at that. So we can have that in our painting toolbox. I'm excited about this. This is the third one in kind of a fairy tale series that got kicked off because I really like a red cape. Mm hmm. So hopefully everybody's ready to get going. Definitely. I've got my sippy sippy, so I'm completely ready to get going. I've got a nine by 12 canvas here. The materials are all listed in the description below, including a link to the traceable and the reference images, which are PDFs. Mm -hmm. If you click their link, the little weird text under the picture, it'll open it up and you can print a PDF. And so you can have your own reference and your own traceable if you don't feel like freehanding this in today. Mm -hmm which I'm going to show you how to transfer that on. Huh. I'm excited about that. That's very nice. Ooh. And then all the materials in the description below. You're, That's where I hide them. I, I'm really surprised. For a Tuesday morning, we've got over 300 people here. And they're just like, bang, everybody just showed up. I was like, hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> I see even Ghost Hostess made it out today. Hi, Ghost Hostess. Hey, congratulations, sweetheart. So, hey. yeah, we just, all of our friends are here. It's wonderful. I see Stephanie and Judy and Tammy and Maureen and Denise. And, like, I could just go on and on. You know, it's like, you know, I love to do my uh, uh, <laughs> my romper room. Hello, everybody. Hello. We just, it's nice. We're all here. So we're, we're all, here. all here. We're ready to paint. We're ready to paint. Let's get this started. we got to put our background right. in. Let's do it. So this became my background of the season. I'm not saying it's my theme, but I'm really into it lately. Oh, I'm going to need you to, to oh, wait, we get to bump over your canvas there and tell me what you got there. on. Oh, I really, it's, it's real See, what, Oh, there you go. There you go. Okay. And do, do we have anything on the canvas We're there? We're going to need to move this all stuff. I don't know. It shifted. Did, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, on, on, were there wishes there? No, oh, okay. no, no wishes, wishes today, today. cause we're big art questing today. Oh, that's right. That's right. Big art quest. I forgot about that. Sorry. So I have Prussian blue here, titanium white, Mars black, and then I'm going to do a splatter snow because I have a really good splattering tool, but mm -hmm. this is an optional area. This is the, this is fluid or soft, sometimes called soft bodied acrylic paint and titanium white. Gotcha. Now the Prussian blue, you could switch out for phthalo blue, but I like the deeper winter value of this particular color. Mm -hmm. So I've been using that, but you know. You'll be okay if you use phthalo blue. Your painting won't explode. <laughs> and nothing terrible will happen to anyone anywhere. <laughs> no. So I'm coming through from the edge and I'm loading my brush up, which is a number 30. It's just a big, wide brush for acrylic paint. Mm -hmm. And I'm loading both sides. You can see I flip it and load it. I'm going to come get some black. I get that on my edge of my brush. Then I'm going to put a little white in there. And I'm going to come and make a streak from the upper right towards the lower left and you can see as i'm painting this these streaks kind of hit the canvas the streaks hit the canvas the streaks get on this canvas and it starts to immediately look like kind of a diagonal wind blowing mm -hmm. so this is i'm going to load up this time with some white and then some blue a little more white and then mm. just a smidge of the black and come here so yeah, Ghost and and her and and, and new little brush, uh, Tallulah, are watching with us. Are they? Uh -huh. Well, welcome to the world, Tallulah. <laughs> we are so happy to have you here. You have no idea. We all just love your mommy. All right, so let's load up some more white. I'm just tapping that in there so it's sort of dispersed, and I'm going to load up a little more black, and again coming this direction. Now I'm doing this so that the background is dark. I wanted to change this up so it was a little bit more like our other red cloak painting and had that same sort of wintry feel. And so that's what I'm doing today with my time. A little black here and there. Get this out of the way before it gets damaged. <laughs> and really what's important about this background is that 
you kind of keep the diagonal in the same direction, mm-hmm. right? And then you just go in a nice swooping from one corner to the other, which you kind of have to fake because, like, sometimes the paint won't make it the whole way. Yeah. So you got to pretend like you did. There we go. Just coming back up the other way. Luckily, only some of this is really going to show sort of this area and a little bit over here. I might flip this canvas over mm -hmm. so that I can have an easy time painting the other side. Ah, uh, yeah. Sometimes it gets a little crazy for me at my standing easel and it gets hard to be on my diagonal. So I'll get some blue and a little white. Just get my white and a little blue. Getting this in. I'm gonna put my canvas the way I intended because I like this wind directionality. Yeah. And I'm gonna get some white loaded up on my brush and a little blue. A little white, just make sure that I streak a little bit of this sort of dry brush snowing. Can you see that going in? The trick of this is that my heavy bodied paint is quite thick, right? And my brush is dry and I'm just tapping it in. You can kind of see that it's just sort of tapped in so that I can just come here and brush that blusteriness in. That's what I want it to feel. It's very cold and blustery. I had thought about using a fan for this as well, but I didn't get to experiment with the technique before the class, so I figured I wouldn't dump it on you like out of the blue. <laughs> Almost done. You know, we just want that feel, right? Yeah. Now, the next step, now well, we're going to have to make sure we got some right here, though. This is planning. I'm gonna put her slightly off center and up here and we're gonna be loose at the bottom like we like to do with our portraits. But I need to make sure that this interesting background is everywhere. So you can see I'm just brushing that back up and that's sort of energetic and interesting as well. And by going over it with my dirty brush, it knocks back the white a little bit. Oh yeah. And it just keeps this sort of, I'm snowing vigorously <laughs> feeling going. You know, so we've got that happening and I'm going to treat myself to some snowflakes in the background. I'm gonna use uh, my small splatter brush, which is the one that uh, looks like a toothbrush but is in no way for your teeth. My favorite, favorite thing I got to make. Because it makes my splattering so predictable and so much easier. I can just splatter how I want to splatter. Just have everything where I like it. Because I wanted some snow. Now I've got a couple little spots I'm going to fix there. Those are, I guess those would be behind. Uh, the, the they're going to be behind her anyways, and I'm going to smooth them out so that they're not a problem. Hmm. So I've just put some of my Prussian blue on my brush. And these will all be behind her anyways. But just to make sure that if anything were to pick out, peek out, it would just look like very energetic snow. Cool. So on the splattering, I have a video about splattering and you can watch it. It is an optional technique and it's one I recommend you practice on um, off 
your canvas to check your load before putting it on the canvas. <laughs> okay. Just something I recommend. I feel pretty good about that. And then just to be a completionist, I'll load a light amount and see, cover that back up. Just in case anyone ever needed to know how to sort of fix that. Hmm. There it is. There you go. You got your background in. She's in. Both of them now are in snowy backgrounds. <laughs> I'm going to sip my coffee. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Doesn't yeah. it look wintry? It turned out really nice. It's wintry. Been having a lot of fun in the wintry world. So yeah. much for you guys to do coming up. Yeah. Mm. All right. I have to dry this. You do. So I'm going to let you guys talk to John. Okay. And I'm going to dry this canvas with my hair dryer. Let's see if I can find the buttons. Hey, look, I found it. So, man, there's a lot of you guys coming out to hang out here on a Tuesday afternoon with us. So I have to say thank you very much. And looking forward to seeing all of your uh, little reds in the wood paintings. Those are always fun to see. So looking forward to that. I want to just say thank you for guys for coming out and hanging out with us in the live. It's uh, it's really fun. Um, I know that uh, we don't, uh, th those of you guys who uh, are catching this on the on the replay, don't get a chance to, to see that chat. But I encourage you, if you have a chance, to come, come and join us. Um, it's a really a lot of fun. We cover a lot of different topics and uh, if you if you have the chance to join one of those, they're they're really cool. But um, remember that there's uh, links in the description below for the traceable, the reference video, uh, links to our website where you can get access to all of the um, those tools and, and reference materials that you need, as long as well as finding out other interesting videos and things that you could be doing with us. So check that out. Those are in the links below. Um, you should do that socially stuff. You know, that like, comment, subscribe, and share stuff. You know, that helps uh, get the word out, lets other people know on uh, on YouTube and Facebook and things like that, that, you know, we may be doing something interesting over here, and you can come join us, and we would have more of us in the live to go do the shenanigans and things. So, I think she's uh, testing to see how they're dry. So, well, that's uh, that's pretty much most of everything that I had prepared to say today. So, yeah. I'll have to look out here. Oh, she's done. Sorry, it just doesn't dry quick. Oh, that's okay. I was right about the time I had run out of things to say. I could hear the panic in your voice, so I thought, <laughs> I better just let this go. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> I could hear... I could hear him panicking over there, and I'm like, ah, oh, hopefully it's dry. Maybe it's not. <laughs> we'll find out. <sighs> All right, I'm going to sip my coffee, and then yeah. I'm going to lay my image in. Let, put the image in. Now, are you going to you're going to be using a traceable I for am. This? I'm going to demo how to get this on. So we've talked a lot about how I use this tracing paper in our big art quest. Yeah. How I go through my design process. So you know I'm a hot mess to get to here. You know I'm a messy, messy drawer. So that's why I like to use tracing paper because it allows me to iterate and iterate and iterate and eventually get to something I'm happy with. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, transfer it to my image. All worked out. That is my favorite thing to do. So this is my Serral transfer paper. I'm using red so you can see it, not just to, not to be ironic with the, the cloak or anything. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm going to tape this down in two more places because nothing ruins your transfer more than image shift. Unless it's somehow part of your art technique, which is entirely possible. I have seen that. Really like fuzzy images. Now, rumor now I'm going to put my glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah. I well, love these. While you're, while you're, you just have changed my life. While you're tracing that in. So the rumor has it that this, uh, this red cloak... Mm -hmm. It was actually constructed of folded Ikea uh, towels. <laughs> it's not actually a cape. It's just a series of towels that are layered to make it look that way. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so if you guys need either the traceable or the reference image, that's on the website in a PDF. That joke going back to the fact that uh, Jon Snow's cloak was made from an Ikea rug. So... You know, like you do. Like, like apparently costume designers do. So. Costume designers got to do what they got to do. Now, this particular girl is uh, fairly interesting in that she's so crazy symmetrical. Really symmetrical chick. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So much so I would say that, that was probably one of the more challenging things for me to get this uh, worked out. Okay. So I'm going to just give myself some reminders that I've got hair like you do. You know, little hairline reminders so I know where those are. I've got this really cool. I'm going to, I gave you guys the traceable for the curl, but I'll just freehand that in because that's easier for me to freehand that in. And you just trace over the lines with a colored pencil or pen or really anything you have. This is going to go in a lot like our other cloaks have gone in. We're going to do the more expanded color set. So we have lots of drama in our cloak. Mm -hmm. Now we've got this wonderful mass of hair that this lucky lady has. Little ruffle, and then the hands. Hands are always a challenge. Now you've got the, the traceable makes a big difference in helping. You. It does. I mean, it really does. To be honest, if you even just looking at the picture of her hand, her hand looks weird. It is, and it was in a weird placement, which is actually why I changed the crop. Because if you had her arm really long, it looks like a whole other person is holding the <laughs> apple, which else is, is super creepy. <laughs> Here, have this apple. <laughs> <laughs> so now on our scale of one to three in difficulty where where do we think this one is i'm thinking that this is going to be a uh, two or three depending where you're at on your art journey if you've done the whole art quest this is probably getting down to about a two for you mm. if you haven't really done the art quest this is definitely going to be a three because there's a lot of techniques that we've covered that we're going to be using gotcha I feel like I got it all in. We'll find out in the big reveal. You stay. No tack tape is my favorite tape. Much better than no tack tape. Better than no tack tape, which is not effectual. <laughs> I've got to get some more serial paper. Yes. All right, I'm going to tape this sort of, oh, no, the tape is sticking to me. It'll come <laughs> off my hand. Ooh, work? and that's a hard one today because the image is like I'm running out of red on my serial paper because mm. like the image didn't really transfer. Which is a little frustrating. I think I have enough to block in and get through. I believe we're gonna we're gonna find out if I do. I'm gonna be looking at that closely. I'll tell you that right now. All right, I'm gonna try to block in this cape. I'm gonna put out some more paint. I'm gonna put out my alizarin. And then next to it, I'm going to put out my CAD Red Medium. Any paint colors that I don't end up using during the live, I will adjust on the description. I will make adjustments to that. Let's um, put out some burnt sienna. I think I'm going to be using that. We'll see. And then... Burnt umber. Because we got skin tones to work out, don't we? Mm hmm And then uh, yellow ochre. And I'll put that near another little thing of alizarin so I can make up a bunch of skin tone base. So again, I'm going to be doing the uh, European fair skin on this mixture. And I put things down, and then I don't know where I put them down. <laughs> you ran out of place to put things? No, I mean, like, I just had an alizarin, and then, then I, like, it, put it, it down, and it's, like, gone. It's not the one that was in your hand, though. There it is. <laughs> well, that would be so funny. <laughs> where is that alizarin? Oh, you mean this one? In my hand? <laughs> so I'm going to put some more titanium white out, because I'll need something by my skin tone for sure. And then I'm going to put out some zinc. Now, I have in there mixing white as an alternative. And there are some student lines that carry economic zinc or mixing white paint, like Galleria and like System 3. 
So you don't have to go drop a whole big chunk of change on your zinc. Okay, so to mix my base skin tone, I'm gonna pull out one bead of alizarin and one bead of yellow ochre. There we go. And then I try to get as much of the pigment off of my palette knife as I can. I'm gonna start folding that into our white, which is gonna help me get my fair, fair skin. And I'll get my shadows between a combination of this and this and that. So that's how we're gonna get that. That's just best to start with a nice, Fair, 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 fair skin tone. If it's too bright, you can always get a smidge of your Prussian and cool the skin tone down a bit. And since this is a winter day, you'll want to do that. But be careful with how much you add to cool it because it will really, really impact. All right, I'm going to take a number six Cambridge, which is a bristle and synthetic blend, and I'm going to start blocking in the cloak, and I'll just take a little Prussian and alizarin to do that as, a, as a, just a base base color. See if I can see my drawing at all. Huh. But luckily I have my reference here, so if I don't really have any idea what I'm doing. And I'll be able to fix it. Just getting in this first layer. You know me and layers. I use a lot of them. How is everybody doing? Good. There, I was just looking over here in chat. You know, we got over 400 people here hanging out with us. And they're having a really, really good time chatting here. And, and, and it looks like a lot of people are enjoying this holiday that's coming up here. There's, you know, we've got to, uh, the thanks. Uh, giving holiday weekend, the shopathons that are coming up, mm. the the big food events that many of us are preparing for. So there's lots of chat about uh, various recipes and interesting things that were going on. Uh, uh, so we had, uh, yeah, been 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 interesting things out here. Interesting things out here. Yeah, I'm gonna end her base like I like to do, very loosely. Mm hmm. So that she's sort of in focus and complete here, but not necessarily in focus and complete everywhere. It's now, more arty that way. Which color set are you using there? Uh, alizarin and a little Prussian. Alizarin and a little Prussian. Okay. Uh, we're going to be on for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. As we were last. But this will be like the third year, won't it? Um, I think this is our third year. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And we're going to yeah. be on for Thanksgiving. And we have, we have, this will be the third year that we have, do we have friends are for over our first year? The first year was my mom. Okay. The infamous cadmium cupcake that oh, that's she tried right. to eat. That's right. And uh, I made her paint like all day and in black light and, <laughs> and glitter. <laughs> oh, good times. And, um, <laughs> yeah, as a, uh, Steffi was like, who cooks in your family? It's like, what well, sort of a variety? Cinnamon is the, the, the chef-y person. She can actually cook a turkey. And um, I bake cookies. John's a baker. He's a I, good cookie maker. I make other baked goods like breads and science -y based experimentation. He does. He's into it. I like making... Um, I, I do a lot of research on like European breakfast dishes. I'm going to get darker as I go inside the hood. As you go inside the hood, get darker. It did. Well, I mean, it's, it's, there's not as much light in there. There's not as much light in there, so just be sure you're going darker. Now, if I, you need to to see it, get even a little black on there. Just make sure you can see that this is much darker. Now, who all is going to be over here? Kim, Kim Sim was asking, who all is going to be over this well, year? Well, we are having the off-kilter crafter over. That's right. Ian will be here. And I think he has some family members that'll be joining him as well, and then there'll be our family, you know, the kids and us. But uh, let's see, uh, our our moms are respectively 
off on vacation on, on vacays so <laughs> we're not taking it too personal yeah <laughs> Just making sure we've got this nice red base so when we put in our hair and other objects. Now we have this here. So alizarin is a slightly transparent color. I'm going to feather this over where I have the lace. And again, getting loose down here like we did with our. Um, expressionist guy. This is just the block. This is just the first bit of paint that we've got coming in. Hmm. We kind of see a hood now. Maybe, kind of see a hood, maybe hopefully. You scoot your little canvas, your palette over there. Uh, not the canvas, the palette. Sorry. There it goes. Perfect. It's just in a crazy it, place. It's it, way over on the table. Right I know. Now. It's weird. I, I can come over and move that camera I over. I feel like there's gnomes that come into the studio I, at night and move my cameras. All right. I so think they're children, actually, is what they are. <laughs> I'm taking my black and my Prussian blue. And I'm coming in and putting in some base for now, the hair. Now, when doing this painting, if you didn't have Prussian blue, would you suggest doing it? Yeah, just switch to Thalo. Okay, you just switch to Thalo, mm -hmm. and that would be okay? It would be okay. So Thalo is more turquoise. It's brighter. It's still a very cool winter color. You won't lose the winter feel. It'll just be more aqua, you know, warmer. And I guess you could add, and that's where you suggest bringing a little bit of black into that? Yeah, you can add a little black. You can, you know, add a little brown, which actually kind of takes it to the green, but there's stuff that you can do. Don't don't not do it. Maybe you have indigo. That would be really nice too. Okay. So don't you can, not paint because you're you know missing a blue. You could always do a little color study if you needed to, Dick. See mm -hmm. you know how. Yeah, practice this technique with the color. And I mean, I love it. And we're painting with a lot of Prussian blue. Mm -hmm. Um, this winter, but it all exchanges with Thalo. So if you don't have it and you can't get it, don't stress on it. Is cobalt in the same family as thalo? As like as far as color interchange, I don't know. I think it's closer to um, manganese blue, but I'd have to look at the two and read hmm. it. <coughs> There's a couple different blues there. There are many blues, <laughs> all the way up to yinmin, which That's you right. have a tube of. I wonder how yinmin would look in this. Probably kind of flat. Very flat. Very very flat. It would be super infrared reflective. It would be super infrared <laughs> reflective, is correct. It would totally be a thermal reflector. And be blue, which is interesting. And be blue. Because normally things have to be white or... Just making sure this is here. Blocking that in. There's so much blocking in, man. around the face. So she's going to start to show up as we fill in everything around her. Mhm. Mm I'm going to start the curl which is really interestingly enough a tube <laughs> with the locks of hair. Yeah. Those are complicated. It's real fun to do a curl. And I like that she had one real distinct curl. So, like, we could cover that. Mm -hmm. But we weren't, like, trapped in it. Which would not be, you know, particularly fun. So, I'm going to do the cuff. And I'm actually going to put out a little thalo. If you only have Prussian, you can use Prussian. If you are only had thalo, you can still use thalo. And you're going to see real quick how this is just a slightly different blue. See? Right over the Prussian, you can see it. Just a different blue. Smidge of burnt umber. And I'm going to use this to sort of put in this 
white sleeve that we have. I'm going to be very loose about the sleeve. I'm going to kind of make a triangular shape and then bring it off. That way, just the edge of it isn't completed. I'm only going to be worrying about this part right here and any kind of focus detail. Just enough to justify what I've got going on with a lace cuff in here, which I'm going to get some more uh, phthalo and a little more burnt umber. And I'm just very loosely come here with this darker color. I'm going to be like wiggling. See, I kind of wiggle my brush and make it kind of just rough and raw. Rough and raw. Rough and raw. Get a little more paint. Uh-oh. What? Anime gamer girl is in class right now watching us instead of doing her home or do her schoolwork. Uh oh. <laughs> I may have just I may, I just totally called her out. So <laughs> she's like, hopefully her, uh, her 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 professor isn't like also watching this after the show and is like, hey, I know who that is. <laughs> 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 I wonder what class she's in. Hopefully not art history. If it's art history, you should be paying attention. Yeah, you really need to be paying attention in art history. If it's like these. math or something, <laughs> you know, maybe you can mail it in. I don't know. I'm going to take a little of my Prussian into my alizarin and add a little of my um, cat red medium to that mixture. So it was a smidge of Prussian. Again, you could just switch to the phthalo if you needed to. So I'm getting this. This is the base of my apple color. I'm really excited about painting this apple. There are others who are work also apple. admitting they're like, uh-oh. Well, if I'm going to get called out, like, I'm at work, too, so <laughs> there are many, many uh, eye, eye devices hidden under desks watching Sherpas. <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to, like, encourage it, but I do appreciate it <laughs> greatly. I'm just using this brush to tap this in. This is the deepest color of my apple. I'm not going to worry about my values quite yet. She's in art class, so it's acceptable. They're they're talking about you, He's sharing. Oh, well, that's they're having a very okay. nice time. They really like your art. Thank you so much. <laughs> Actually, I was going to tell you since since I had it because there was a there was a really nice message we got earlier. I didn't get a sh I saved it for you, but there was uh, someone. Uh, a in... little more impression. Where did it go? It's a really nice underneath and. Just make sure that where it's near my finger isn't it. There's Lindy, there's uh, she's in South Africa. She loves it. She's a uh, a wall muralist, and she 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 never misses your painting, your your video. Oh my gosh! Thank you. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. So That's a that is a really wonderful thing to do wall murals, and it's yeah. hard. You know, it's like physically demanding. I particularly love wall murals because it's artwork that everybody gets to experience. Because it's sort of, um, you know. It's there, kind of like graffiti, you know, or statues. Mm -hmm. They're just sort of, they're, they're very permanent like objects that you have to contend with. So I'm going to block in the face and some values, and then I'm going to block in the hand and some values. And then I'm going to do that thing where I just put in highlights and lowlights, and all of a sudden we get a painting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's, that's that what we're doing here? <laughs> that's what we're doing. No, so I'm going to take my warming color here and make sure I've got some of this a few places. Now what brush are you using? This is still the number four silver Cambridge. Okay. So the Cambridge is a really cool brush. I have them in my Explorer set. And the reason I put them in there is I want you guys to get to try them. They're a bristle brush with synthetic filaments. So they don't mush. Hmm. Because mushing is a problem. Let me take this and put this. I may have to get to a smaller brush for her face, though. Oh, yeah? Yeah. All 
Right now, I'm just doing this. Blo what I, you know, it's just a blocking in. It's the highlights and lowlights, and I could even add a little of my burnt umber to this mix just to make it a deeper shadow on the skin. We're just getting it in, and then we'll we'll make arrangements. Hmm. Fluffy brush. Fluffy brush. Brush be so fluffy. I'm just putting in these basic planes of the face. Then I will soften them and, you know, here I'm going to put some of that sink. I'm going to get some titanium white and lighten this a bit. I might get some of my sinking color. There we go. I just want to make sure that this is oh, even lighter, just light in the forehead. So I'm like, oh, yeah, it's light in the forehead. And Wiped off my brush. Too much pigment. Ah. That happens. So because we have blue underneath her, you know, it's nice to have this um, kind of roughed in layer to work from. I wish I had one of these in a number two. Hmm. Well, I, so. I, I know someone who I'll ask about it. <laughs> I'll, do you know? I'll, 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 I'll make a call. See what, see what they can do for us. They, they may have one. Like color at the top of the cheeks, and then I've got to do dark on, in the eyes. I'm just saying, hey, there are planes of the face, and these have highlights and uh, low lights. Just start to get them in. There's going to be a skeletor phase. I'm just going to tell you right now before you panic. The skeletor phase is coming. But at this point, we're just saying. Hey, faces aren't flat. They have values. Getting the blue knocked back. All right, getting the blue knocked back, making sure the upper lip is a little bit there. All right. Up the nose a bit. <laughs> it is weirdly Skeletor. Yeah. There's just a terrifying phase, man. So I like I was talking to John the other day about the difference between watercolor and acrylic. When I'm painting a face in watercolor, there really isn't an ugly phase. Oh yeah. It's 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 very interesting how they watercolor just sort of develops in this beautiful series of emergent layers that, you know. Whereas this one sort of sneaks up on you like a creepy yes. monster from underneath the bed that goes hey i'm gonna come tickle you <laughs> exactly <laughs> you look really scary from far away <laughs> i'm just gonna take this small number two and kind of put in some of my darker values so i'm gonna get this brush wet this is a number two buck curl and i'm gonna take a little of my burnt number i might tone it cool it with a little of my prussian blue i might come over here and cool this a darker shadow color. Did I put out my glazing medium? No, I didn't. Put out glazing medium. I love glazing medium. This some of them are called glazing medium and they actually just glaze. This particular product is acrylic glazing liquid. I have satin, you can do gloss or matte. I usually actually like gloss. I just got this. This slows down the drying time of paint and lets you glaze, which are two things you really need to be able to do in acrylic. Generally, if you see acrylic glazing on another product, it may just mean that it glazes and that would actually be drying very fast. Just so you know, <laughs> before you get it and discover it <laughs> in a not fun way. I'm going to just come here and I know I've got the eyes are more in shadow. 
There's lots of little micro shades in eyes, but I just really want to get the the base here. Looking really this cool. In. It's looking really neat. I just have is it? it? <laughs> well, see, what's interesting is that you get to, like, I, I like seeing how these um, blocks of color come in underneath a painting because it, I, I never thought of how, or, or, or I should say my eye isn't trained to see these blocks of tonality difference that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, when I look at her, I see these, you know, these rolling uh, subtle colors across your face, uh, but I'm learning to see the blocks of light and darkness and, and be able to create those, you know, those zones, um, at least mentally to understand how to deconstruct that face more. So, uh, that's been just observationally a very interesting experience for me. Um, I can't do it, but I, I kind of <laughs> see it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, and a trick is if someone is having a lot of trouble seeing those values, um, a good trick is to print out your reference also in black and white. Making sure there's a sort of dark value under the hair. Scary paint by numbers set. Now I also have a shadow that goes under the nose. Super important to me. I'm here at the nostrils. I'm going to do a slightly lighter color for the nostrils. I'll just very carefully tap this in. This is where it always goes weird on me. Putting in the nose. Oh, thank you. I love you. Oh, it's fresh. Can you take that one? I have a studio assistant. <laughs> <laughs> it's very exciting for me. Oh wow! So this is interesting. I was uh, well, I was doing some backstage directing here, but I looked over, and so uh, uh, Anime Gamer Girl says my art teacher said that she's a fan of your work, and she uh, has the same paintings as you, the fairy tale paintings. She said that uh, uh, she followed your steps on them. So, really? Yeah. So she was apparently so that I, I there's a it's difficult to see some of these as they come by, but it, it seems the gist was that they're uh, she's also a, a fan of yours as well. So that's awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you guys for sharing and, and being part of our art tribe. It really is awesome to have all you guys out here to hang out and uh, your thank you, Nikki, for helping me catch that comment. I appreciate it. So. You guys are amazing. Yeah, Julie, Julie was saying this is a lot like being a forensic sculptor or a reconstruction artist. It yeah. totally allows me to see those underlying layers. And uh, that's been exciting for me just to, to, you know, see how all this is going. Um, I really like sculpting, so this has been kind of informing for me. Making sure we've got the subtle values. Got that little shadow. There's this weird shadow at the tip of the nose. I'll get in there and work it more. Now I've got my flesh tone here. And I'm going to add a little of this blue and a smidge of black to this. Right? And then I'm going to add some white. And what I'm actually creating here, crazily enough, is this eyeball color. So eyeballs are not white. Um, unless they've been uh, photoshopped a lot. And to get a good eyeball, you've got to get a good off-white. Mm 
get that tapped in. Because all you have to do then is, especially on smaller pieces, all you've got to do is the right highlights and a couple dots of color and you can get a really great eye out of it. But it's about getting that first eyeball color <laughs> in better. Carson was curious, are you going to pug her nose? You know, chances are it's happening. It's, it's it happening. it always happens to me. You just, you make that little button, boop, nose. <laughs> right? You just like it. You're like, I like that nose. I don't know if I, I don't, like it as much as I do it. But <laughs> what it is, is that I have a nose that I'm confident in doing. And I yeah. think sometimes um, my brain just gives me that nose when I'm asking for something different. <laughs> says, no, no, we know this one. Let's you're do just, this one. You're going to make it. So that's, I guess that's why it's, it's, it's important to practice doing funny faces. So you can learn all of those different yeah. ways of. I, I say that as an armchair artist who doesn't actually do any of this. <laughs> but if anybody had a right to have an opinion on this, it would be you. You've watched a lot of it. I, I guess if anyone gets to have a secondary opinion. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with being an armchair artist. All right. So we're doing pretty good there. I am going to block in our hand. Okay. And that's going to be, this is sort of more of the challenge. So I'm going to add maybe a smidge even of a lizard over here so that my hand has slightly a, a red cast to it. Some white here. So from the knuckle to the vanishing thumb, I want my a highlight color. A highlight color right there. There can be another one right here at the thumb joint. Mm -hmm. There's a um, a little one. Huh. Hmm. I think actually I'm, I think I'm here. I need that to paint weird, that in black. That weird little bendy. <clears throat> yeah, thing. I think I didn't put the bend in right, so I'm going to put it back in in black. Just grab some black. That'll happen. You'll be like going, you're like, oh, I put that in the wrong place. As you're looking at it, as you're painting, mm -hmm. you'll see those things and be like, that's in the wrong place. There's so much hair happening here, though, that this is all fine. Which is always a nice feeling, right? Yeah. See, now, now you see this person who's peeking out behind a red ball. <laughs> like, hello. <laughs> I'm a creepy person. <laughs> It's going to get weird. I'm not saying it won't. There's going to be a weird phase, and then hopefully we can get her there. Mm -hmm. I always think today's going to be the day where it doesn't come together. <laughs> <laughs> Live on camera for everyone. All right. Too much red, but picking up some, right? Yeah. So here. A little bit right here. And at the, the nail. Trying to get these highlights on the hand is always the, the big challenge. The highlight here, knuckle, and a nice highlight here, which we probably will have to define even more mm -hmm. right as we're going now I'm gonna get into you know more of my base skin tone and I might darken it a pitch a little umber I get the rest of this in pretty well. There'll be a lot of adjustment, but getting these basic planes in will really help. Mm -hmm. And then one of the things is like you can then check check it a little bit too. Like, did I get a hand? Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. 
And you may be coming back and putting um, highlight fields back just to make sure that they're there. And you still have another shadow skin color that you've got to deal with. Oh, yeah. But we're just trying to make sure that we have this first kind of hand space. Um, brown. As we're needing it. So I kind of went with a little darker shadow event here. There's just a little more brown in that. Coming in the wrist. So I know hands are challenging, you know, because we're so familiar with them. So if we don't get certain things about them right, it'll just break our brains. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's why they're harder for people. And then we're also not inclined to practice them like religiously. Okay, I'm gonna come back into a little bit of that highlight color and just make sure that I have a couple things more prominently placed. Where I can see them like, right? Can you guys see that? Mm hmm. Just making sure these are good. All right. See, it starts to be a hand. It's the weirdest thing. I like how those all the tones just kind of come together in the layers. They come together in the layers, and then you just start to get a hand. It does. It just sort of forms. It does. And then if you get it wrong, you can see it. You'll be like, oh, that didn't work. But even then, it's not going to hurt you. So just know that. You're just putting it in in stages. I'm going to sip my new coffee that my adorable daughter brought me and assess where I'm at. So crazy looking stage of the painting. Mm -hmm. Unlocked. That's an achievement we've unlocked. Can we paint this crazy? Yes, we can. I think so. Yes, we can. But the trick is to get it from here where we've blocked it in, we've used our paint, we've made a map, and see those highlights and the lights and those shapes and shadows so that we can start to pull her. I feel like it's reaching into the canvas and pulling the image right on out. So that's what we're going to do. Doesn't that sound fun? Hmm. So, uh... Hmm. She did a good job. So now, uh, Carolyn was asking, uh, do you, why were you doing the highlights first, not just over uh, the skin on the hand? Oh, because I was seeing them better. So ah. a lot of times I'll pick what values I'm seeing. And usually I see shadows easier. But in this particular case, I was seeing the highlights better. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to go into those highlights. And so that's, uh, you know, to also help with uh, Nifty Thrifty's question, hmm. the these sort of the layering of these uh, blocks of color and image are, are what helps create the depth of uh, like the hair, you know, and things like that, right? Yes. And this isn't the only way to accomplish a painting mm -hmm. by any means. You'll go to workshops, you'll go to stuff, a lot of different ways to accomplish paintings. And there isn't a right or wrong one. There's just the one that you're comfortable with and there's the one that, helps you create art in a way that you enjoy it and it's fun and not stressful, hopefully. <laughs> I'm gonna put out some pressure. Cool. Just so I have it. I feel like I might need it. We'll see. I'm low on it. Okay. Let's cape it up. <laughs> now, for doing this cape, what, what, what brush are you getting there? I'm gonna go get my... Uh, Weird little number six Cambridge that I had from earlier. Same one. I reading. like it. Yeah, it seemed to work for you. I like it a lot. Start just redding it up. 
So I'm going to take my alizarin and my cad and I'm going to mix them one to one to create kind of this warmed crimson. <laughs> we'll come along the edge, the edge of the cloak with this. And it's going to come down this edge. And I'm going to come in here and brush this in a little bit lightly over everything, making sure I foreshorten this little edge here as I pull this in. I'm going to definitely Add some shoulder shaping right here. There'll be highlights. So now I'm paying attention to, remember we were doing the brush directionality for the cape? Mm -hmm. Same thing. We're just paying attention to the directionality of everything here. So even if we're not being very specific with our alizarin pad mix, we are at least being true to the image in some way. And already this second layer starts to pull it together. It doesn't, it doesn't take a lot to make it all work. Just come in here with a little, a little light in there, soften this. You're going to say that this around here. Loose. Loosey goosey. Yeah. which is nice. Now I'm going to just get a little of my brush in here. Just make sure that I'm blending in another layer of this deep value just so I have it here. I want to see that shadow. And while this is wet, it'll do a nice job of kind of working together and blending to create those hue sets. So that is a little of the Prussian, some of the alizarin. You, know, you can come into your cape and make sure that this shadow. Yeah, I think everybody's going to be looking forward to the new studio when we can get some music and bubbles and. More. I miss the bubbles. Does everyone miss such everyone, a snowflake so much? Everyone totally misses that and the music <gasps> and the, you know, we had, we've had like 400 people here. So it's, uh, it's been pretty exciting, um, with these, with these lives going, but you know, our studio is, you know, it's been on its last little leg over the past uh, few months and we've been sort of limping it along, um, yeah. But, uh, you know, thank you, thank you, thank you to I love big loves to all of our community who came in and helped support on our patron, uh, on our Indiegogo and, and helped us get our new studio together. Um, that's been really exciting. Um, and over the course of the next few weeks, do you need to tell them anything there? I'm oh, sorry. yeah. So I'm starting to move this in through the hood. Okay. Right. The deep value underneath is helping this feel very rich. Mm -hmm. I'm not having to, I'm going to really worry about the highlights and then I'll come back if I need to with my low value. I'm just making sure my cape is red. Gotcha. Red is your cape. But yeah, we're 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 upgrading parts and we're starting to gather some things here in the studio now. So uh you know probably over this Christmas break we're gonna we're gonna work on uh some stuff around the studio and hopefully in the beginning of the year you guys will start be able to see some new stuff. But uh you know, a lot of that's just going to depend on how quickly. 2018 is going to be so awesome. Yeah, how quickly we can get the gear in and tested and working. 
So bear with us as we limp along just a little longer. But there's great stuff. And we'll be doing updates on uh, theartsherpa.com forward slash patron. And you can find yep. out information about uh, the studio rebuild and all the other kind of things that we've got going on that have been uh, you guys are helping us out with right out there. So thank you so much. <laughs> I'm excited about it. It's like we got I new stuff. I know you are. There's secret stuff happening. There is. So now our cape is feeling pretty, pretty red. Yeah. Right. It needs um, some key shadows. That we're going to be able to put in right now, and then it's going to need some key highlights, and then it's going to be cape like real fast. So I'm going to take my Prussian and my alizarin. I'm going to make sure that I've got a nice shadow edge at the edge, and then I'm going to put a wrinkle right here in the hood coming up the mid. And really, this is just like the other one. Just look for, look for the patterns, you know. You don't have to do every wrinkle, but if you get enough of them, it becomes what it is, right? I'm just finding those. This comes here. There's kind of a nice shadow that comes up from this shadow is down in this space and comes up the hood here. And pull a few of these down into the folds. Rinse off. And now we're going to do just a little alizarin and quite a lot of CAD. So it's much brighter. We're going to pop in our highlights. Just on the edge of my brush. Letting a lot of the paint underneath show through. If I see a highlight, I paint it in. If you see a highlight, paint it in. See a highlight, paint it in. That seems like a pretty straightforward philosophy. If you see a paint, if you see a highlight, paint it in. For painting, it's helpful. <laughs> but if you see a low light, run, run from it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> We're just getting this all in. Paint her hood in. Paint it in, paint it in. Nice red here. And right here, the bright red comes along this edge, revealing the two spaces of hood. I'm just dry brushing here. See how our hood's coming together? Looks like I didn't even need the cad red light. Ah. Along here. A few of these bright highlights through here as wrinkles. And on the outside edge. So pretty loose, but enjoyable. Now I'm going to take a little of my zinc and put a, it into my red. It's going to not, it doesn't make it pink. Your red stays red. If I did titanium white, it would be distinctly pink. Just going to make sure we've got some of this velveteen 
highlight along the hood. Doesn't take a lot, it's just a little. And if you don't have zinc, you could leave it at just the um, bright red. Or mixing white, mixing white would work. You're just wanting something that doesn't turn your red pink. And see, we're just putting in a couple key places. Mm -hmm. Once you're happy with that, then you should have pretty awesome sauce. Oh. Sometimes it's nice to take some add. Pop it a couple places to show how red red is. All right. Wow. So now we're going to do the sleeve real quick. Yeah. And then we're going to finish the hand and the apple and the face and then the hair. <laughs> because the hair encroaches on those other objects, which is why we, <laughs> why we have to paint them last. I feel like it's a Snapchat filter. Yep. <laughs> so I really likes it. So on this, it's pretty simple. I'm going to take my um, zinc smidge of my phthalo blue. You can use titanium white. I'm going to pull some highlights down in this and get a little more. I'm going to just do this little delicate wiggle. It's like an implied lace. Now, why did you paint the, the sleeve blue? To be the shadow. I like a blue shadow. Oh, so like, oh yeah, that's uh, so like white makes blue shadows instead of black it shadows. Can't. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. That's in, uh, yeah, I had never thought about like you're using uh, that that blue for the shadow. That's kind of interesting. Now, when I grab the pure titanium, they're asking how you. Uh, it's going to really pop on this space. Oh, yeah. Then when you put that on there, it just to totally just turns white now. It starts to, yeah, take on that feeling. And I'm just dry brushing this in loosely. I'm going to load up on the corner of my brush here. Oops, sorry. And I'm going to very carefully talk about the edge of this lace. Well, I wonder how many people are holding their breath watching you paint right now. Oh, it's just like touch, 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 <laughs> touch, touch. I'm just touching this. I'm just being very delicate about it. There, it's got a nice outside edge. Now that starts to read as a white sleeve with some lace. I'm going to sip my coffee. Yeah. I'm half tempted to send studio assistant mm. to go get me some more coffee. I, mean, she just, she, I think she just did. No, no, to, to heat it up. Oh, is it, is it not microwave? I'll, I'll, I'll do that. She, she's in the other room. So I'll get that. The warmer you. works pretty good, though. I might yeah. be okay. You may be okay. It's, I might yeah. be okay. Alan's warmer does a pretty good job. So now we have some shape. I mean, she has no eyebrows, which we know is super essential to faces. It, that's, it, 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 it takes you from, you know, creepy to... Well, I wouldn't say creepy because uh, there, there are people who choose not to have eyebrows or don't have eyebrows, and they're certainly not creepy. 
But in your painting, you'll want to add them unless there's a really fundamental reason to not to. Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, there's 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 always reasons for for different things, but right now your painting is looking a little. She needs some work. She does need some eyebrows. Bad. She needs some work. <laughs> she needs some skin tone. She needs some skin, eyebrows. Uh, she sk- needs some stuff. I can see the skin tones coming together. And that's all pretty, you know, that's all looking pretty cool. I dig that. Uh, I'm looking for. But I like, it's, it's like you can really see the, the, the shape of everything coming together. It's all there already. My small ruby satin. And we'll paint in her little face. Like you do. Like you do. Well, like I do, yeah. In her hand. Face and hand real quick and then, you know, other stuff. Yeah. So my light skin tone. Now, if at, if at home you want to switch to a smaller brush, like when you're doing lace or one of the other areas, that's okay to try, you know, to switch to a more, con- a brush. If you want to do the lace a different way and, 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 you know, that's interesting to you, for goodness sake, definitely do that. Mm. So I made a very dark shadow tone here. And I'm going to come and pull a shadow on her face. Just very lightly. So I love my glaze for this. I really do. Because it lets me do this in a um, blended way even over dry paint. Glaze helps me do that. So it's one way that you can start to create a blend. <laughs> so Julie says that the picture looks kind of washed out as compared to the painting, which looks very, you know, deep and red. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's what I would say is. Yeah. I consider the picture a suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> Not not a command by any means. I'm going to get some of my blue, my impression blue, and I'm going to come along her face. And just make sure that I, I shape her baseline well. And I'd like to just make a, a comment on that. Hmm. One of the things that you guys will find is that your paintings are going to have brighter, more vivid colors than things that you print or oftentimes see in print. Because it has a much, much, generally speaking, especially if you're using pro paints, there's a much higher quality pigment being used to create that image. So the colors, the reds, the yellows, especially when you're using the, you know, those, those uh, Hansas and cadmiums, those things pop so much more than any of those printed inks that you're going to see that a handmade painting is something truly spectacular when done. And that's why those colors just can't be replicated in print. So, and soapbox. That's why you guys, I love seeing paintings in real life. They make so much more. There's so much more depth to the color, you know. So, yeah. I'm in my impression blue creating shadows around my painting right now because I can. It, and it's not that you can't replicate anything in print with the raw proper media and, and inks, but those typically aren't in consumer grade devices or for the masses. So, so I'm adding a shadow under the apple into the hand with just some pression. Mm-hmm. Right, I mean, you're, no, right, you're going great. I'm, I'm soapboxing. <laughs> it's okay. Soapbox away. <laughs> I'm going to come along and I'm going to tap just a little of the shadow behind this finger. Around this just to make sure the shape is good. Tap a little shadow here. Like you do. I may even bring some deep shadow right here. Pulling this in so that this part of the lace feels like it's diminished from this other part. Just making sure that what I have feels clean. And the blue is a great base for that. Yeah. I'm going to take a little of my uh, Prussian blue into my burnt umber. Definitely mix that into my skin tone. I'm going to come under my nose. 
add a little of my shadow here. And then just under the tip, I'm going to come down a little bit. This is, this is a steady hand moment. <laughs> just tap, tap, tap. Oh, it's just so little. You just want to do so little. Because it's such a pain to fix once you do it. Now, on the eye, I'm actually going to come here and just take this darker color. Around my eye. Just softly blend it out. I'm going to stop at the brow. I'm going to add a little of the shadow right here, this sort of inside set of the nose. And I'm just softly putting it on. See how it's very transparent and I'm very softly adding it. You can do a lot if you do it in stages and don't get too aggressive with the work. I'm going to come here and make sure I've got a nice slant on the eye because I opened it up too much so I have to trim it down. Air blending. There's another little shadow here. Off little shadows right on each side. Now, that same color I'm going to actually use, believe it or not, put in. So, in eyebrows, I like to add like a shadow underneath. I'm going to come here. It's thicker here, the front. And I'm going to pull it finer back towards the brow. So, a nice shaped eyebrow. Doing the same thing. It's always harder to do the other side. Huh. Those people's eyebrows, this was probably the least symmetrical part of this incredibly symmetrical girl. Now, I guess you could use traceables. Yes. If the eyebrows are just, you can just put your traceable right back on your painting. And get that right back in. And interestingly enough, guys, this isn't your eyebrow. This is the shadow underneath the hair that you're going to be putting on for your eyebrow. <laughs> crazily enough. Like this isn't the lid, this is the shadow that you're going to be using to put in your lid. But you got to have the shadow. A little shadow up here. Shadows are helpful. Shadow here. I'm pretty happy at the shadowing at the nose. All right. <laughs> and we've got some of this shadow we can add around the hand because why not? We've mixed it. Right? We can take a little bit of the shadow up right behind the knuckle. Bring it up at the tip of the finger. Very carefully, I'm going to tap in a little bit of the nail. But just as little as I can get away with. Mm. I'm going to put a little shadow at the corner. And maybe a little shadow here. And see, I've got the glaze, so it's just glazing this back. I'm going to feather get my glaze and I'm going to feather this on. So when you're painting anything that requires lots of layers and you're using acrylics, mm -hmm. this product really is super helpful. I'm just doing it very, very softly. I'm going to come here and very, very softly. And I'm just trying to talk about these spaces. as softly as you can. And you may have to come back with, um, on your hand with your 
skin tone, which I've got to get all that color out of my brush. Your base skin tone, and you can warm it up with the mixture there. Just make sure you've got a nice blend happening everywhere. Gonna blend back over. I just have different challenges than somebody painting in a different media. So I over hit that paint right there. Mm -hmm. and it made that finger a little bit strong. And all I'm going to do with that is I'm going to get my blue and get that back into range. Oh, I see. Because again, I don't want my hand to mess with me too much. Gotcha. Pretty happy with that. Yeah. Sip my coffee. Sip your coffee. Oh, See, we're my... getting there. We have yeah. a hand. Hey, look, there's a girl in red on your on your coffee cup too. Mm -hmm. I just noticed that. If you need a one hoot, <laughs> we've got one. Mm. We have the one hoot red riding hood. We did her. Yes. And this is probably a two to three. This is probably a two to three, yeah. I'm gonna drop down to a number four Cambridge and I'm gonna start trying to get her worked out and in. All right. Add a touch of alizarin and some glazing medium. Now I go through the work of trying to put in. Okay, so I'm coming along here. I'm very soft in my brush strokes. A little highlight above the apple. gonna actually glaze down the nose. So I've got this color right here, but I want to do it more transparent so I can make slower steps in this shadow and keep the shadow that I kind of planned in. By glazing it, I can do that, see? Oh, wow. Make sure that what I have, I can blend easier. And this is really about that I have glaze on the brush. Mm. The glaze really helps me. A lot. It is my friend. So if anything is too harsh or needs to be Softened. No, could Look at you? That. It softens really nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. Now, could you explain what glazing is? So, glazing is doing thin, transparent layers of paint. Yeah. Allowing the paint that's underneath, right? To, this is kind of a Grisaille method. So, I'm allowing the paint that's underneath to show through. And this helps me create a more subtle blending scape. I can soften that shadow then. Oh, wow. Yeah, I just blend those together. Just mm -hmm. It's like a grisaille. A grisaille for your face. Grisaille for your face. <laughs> Only in art can you make weird jokes like that. <laughs> well, I'm sure there's other places. I'm sure there are other places, but we, got, we have our own flavor of crazy. So I'm going to take a little of my alizarin. Put it into my um, light skin tone. I'm going to add a lot more white to it. So see, it's quite pink. Yeah. Make sure we got a nice forehead happening here. And I'm going to come to the nose and... 
Make sure I'm going to get it on the corner of my brush. So how, sometimes how I can get away with using a bigger brush is I paint the corner. I'm going to just highlight the nostrils. Center here. Some of this right here. Above her cheekbones. This isn't that different from the geisha girl we painted or I'm just tapping. See, I'm just any ways that I can move the pigment in a not crazy way, it's gonna help me. Dry brushing, glazing, these things all help me to create a more subtle aspect with my painting. A little more glaze. Just glazing it. Mm. This is a great thing to get better at. Now I'm going to take a little of my highlight color. I'm going to get, there's this little spot under my nose that should be more highlighted than it is. I'm going to tap that in real quick. And then get it where I want it to be. And I'm using the, the scrumbliness of this brush. To soften it. Okay? Yeah. Very softened. It's very, very softened. Yeah. So I've lost a little shadow that I need. But that's easy enough. I've got a little of my shadow color right here. Right? Just grab it again in your glaze, and you just come back, put it back in where you need it, softly. Putting it back in, my white, my base, my white. Another little highlight on the nose. Another one right here in the center of the forehead. I'm just tapping in. See, I'm just tapping that in. Another one right here at the top of the cheek. Tap that in. All right, I'm going to take this right above the eyebrow. And now I'm going to work the eyes. I'm feeling pretty OK with all that. <laughs> wow. What? This is a definite horsey comment. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get this. <laughs> So uh, let me go back and find this one again because it's really cute. It says, Primrose says, uh, uh, Cinnamon does a fine detail with such a huge brush. Reminds me of watching a horse itch its eye with its back hoof. It's possible. You just don't want to try it yourself. <laughs> totally reasonable. It is always okay to switch down to, a, switch down to a smaller brush or go up to a larger brush to improve your painting experience yeah. and the control you have over your result. Primrose. Some people come up and say, you have to use one brush the whole painting. That applies to one particular type of painting, and it's cool if you want to take that out, but it's not a universal truth. If it's your thing? If it's your thing, do your thing. Right. Because that's, that's like, you know, there's a whole, there's like, especially in, in Japan, there's a real art form about using one brush to do a whole bunch of different techniques. Oh, but, yeah. And those are some really neat guys. But just in general, there's like, even in the West, different styles. 
So what, what brush do you have, speaking of? I'm going to get into this small brush right here. What is that small This brush? is my number two filbert, and I like it a lot to do eyes. It's a very small filbert. It's a very small filbert with a firm enough bristle where I can get in and make my eyes, and yeah. I really, really like that. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come get a little of my alizarin crimson into my skin tone. And I'm going to come right here to the corner of this eye and just tap the smidge of this in. Just a smidge, man. Now, I don't expect to actually get the tear duct perfect putting in the pink. I'll have to come back and paint the shadow and that stuff. But that gives me that basis, that start, you know, that I'm going to be using. I'm going to take a little of my skin tone. Let the pink get into it, but I need a lighter color. It's okay on this to let a little of your... Um, Crush and get into it because she's kind of got a little makeup on. And come right here, grab the lid, and I'm gonna put in this little highlight. Above this lid, and then around the tear duct. This is this is kind of similar to makeup here, isn't it? There, if you're good at makeup, this is your jam now. Put a little highlight above this uh, eyebrow, I'm just softly brushing it in so it's not strong, right? Now, I have to say... And I'll have to definitely put a little highlight here at the back of the eye. Kudos to all of those of you who can put on, like, eyeshadow <laughs> and stuff like that, because painting on your own face is pretty, like, that's awesome in a mirror that you can do that. <laughs> I've seen... The, that's just like, you know, Wow. I added some glazing medium to my eye mixture just so that it didn't dry out on me too quick. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to come and add this right here. And again, to the tear duct space. Try those tears. To the tear duct space. And there's a bit of a highlight here at the back of the brow. And another weird little highlight here at the back of this eye. I have those in. That's always helpful. I'm going to get my eye color, which is my base skin tone. And I'm going to get a little bit of blue. So I'm going to need in my eye color, I'm going to need a shadow, which is going to be burnt umber and a little of this blue. I'm going to take this mixture right here. I'm going to come between the eyeball and I'm going to trim back the tear duct. And come back here with this. This is going to darken that eye white a little bit. Same here. Now let's trim that tear duct. Come in and just trim that up. There we go. So we're trimming those up. We've got that. I'm going to get right into my Prussian. I see I have, I'll have to remove burnt skin. I haven't even used it. And my burnt umber. I'm going to come right under this lid. I'm going to add a little shadow right here. Just a tiny one, and it comes and it sort of separates up the tear duct from the back of the eye. You can bring the shadow around under your eye. And run it on the inside edge. So you're starting to shade your eyeball. Yeah. This has gone really fast. Is it going fast? Yeah. 
we're, we're, I mean, we're, we're, just, we're an hour and 35 minutes in. Mm-hmm. And I mean, like, this has happened really quickly. Yeah, she's going to be done as soon as we get that apple in. We just got to finish out these eyes. And there's not too much in them. Don't worry about it. You guys are going to have it. So see, I'm shading inside the lid. Mm-hmm. I'm going to come and shade this tear duct a little bit. Shape it up because it got a little crazy. The shade right here. And there's a lot of shading at the back of an eyeball on the far eye the way that it is. We'll come along here. I love these little shaders for their ability to do like so much work. This is looking really nice. Now her green eye, I'm going to take a little of my phthalo. Two girls with green eyes? Two girls with green eyes. Do you know how rare that is, Jack I'm going to make a slightly brighter kind of yellow green aspect. I'm going to come right here. I'm going to lighten the eye with it just a smidge. Now I'm going to take my uh, Prussian and my black. I'm going to start to put in a iris right here. I'm just going to tap this in. So it's just, I just do little tapping motions. Try to make sure that your eyes are lined up. Otherwise, we'll be cross-eyed. So we're starting to get there, see? Yeah. Now I'm going to wipe off my brush. Get a, a lot of glaze. Come across the top of the eye. Make sure that's in shadow. I'm going to get a smidge of just my ochre, and it might get a little green on it, and that's okay because we want it to feel like it's in her eye. We're going to just give a little bit of this right aspect of her eye right there. Now we're going to get some zinc. And you're going to add highlight here. Just a touch of a highlight, right? Wipe off. Come back over. She's got a little highlight across the eye. Yeah, I just tap that in. Now we're going to get our blue and our black, mostly blue. I come up over the lid. Julie says this is, she's just looking gorgeous. Thank you. Totally nailed those eyes. I love eye. Go back a couple lashes. Not every lash, but some. Load up Come along the inside, a little out, maybe put a little shadow back on this lid, right? Yeah. Same thing. Keep going. Anne's like, oh, she came to life with those eyes. She does. She'll come. She'll come right to life when you get the eyes in. I'm gonna come back here. Get a little more black. 
We put some lashes in here. So how are you doing there? Everyone's I'm doing curious great. how you're feeling. I'm feeling amazing. So my thing is I make sure that my outer lashes are longer than my inner lashes. And I'm soft about it because, you know, hey. Some of the shadow on this outside corner. And let's shade her inner lid on both eyes. And come here and say, no, 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 there's a crease. There we go. So we've got a little crease. I'm going to come back real quick with my highlight. Really rinse out the blue because that won't be helpful. Hmm. Can be really hard sometimes to get certain paint out of your brush. I'm just gonna make sure that this highlight is. A little bit back up here. Just th these are accentuated. Those those highlights are accentuated in the eye. Yeah. So we have our reflection in our zinc. We have that. All we need to do is get our blue and our black. Some glazing medium to improve flow. We're going to put in our eyebrows real quick, and then we get to paint our apple and our, our hair. Hmm. And then we're done. So I'm just coming here, and I'm just going to tap up some eyebrows. I like to make the hairs a little longer here. I follow the direction of the brow bone. You can see that the shadow underneath allows me to maybe... You know, not be so heavy handed with the hairs when I'm putting them there so I can get those nice defined brows. Eyebrows say a lot about emotional state, so that's why it can be real stressful when you're doing a face to do them because if you get a result you don't like, your face can look angry or sad or surprised <laughs> or. All kinds of crazy things you didn't intend. Just tap those in. Okay. We got a little brow. I can't resist it. I'm going to um, put... I'm going to do one glaze. I'm going to take my dark color in my blending medium and I'm going to glaze this just a little bit so there's a nicer transition between the highlight and the lid. Because it was a little sudden stark. Then I'm going to pop a titanium white focal highlight. I might use my fluid paint because I think that's going to give me the best result. I'm going to come here. I'm going to just, in that main highlight, add this next highlight. Because I just like how it makes an eye look when you do that. Let's paint this apple. Yeah. Let's sip our coffee and paint this apple. I think <laughs> we nailed the eyes, and that's the one I think, I think that's where people just feel overwhelmed all the time is, like, in the eyes. I, I know I used to, and now I just love doing eyes. Eyes from every angle, everybody's eyes, all kinds of eyes. This eye... Everybody loves this. The, way that the eyes have come together. They've just all brought it and snapped together. And, and everyone's just saying, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. So well, nice. thank you. They can't. Lot, I, and you know what I will say is all, for everyone who's feeling the excitement of this, realize you can do this. That's why we're teaching you out here. Is so you can do it. Straight up true. That's why we want you here. I want to see your eyes. I'm going to take a little of my alizarin. And tone my red. And I may even get a little of my Prussian. To make sure. See the apples are apples are really red, but they're they're all you don't want to oversaturate them everywhere. I'm gonna just start painting the values. You can see where the focus you can actually tell from her eyes. If ever you want to know where a light source is, you can always check the eyes. So see how there's this bank of lights right there? Across her eyes it means she has a bank of lights here. I'll make a you can kind of see it on the apples. The yeah. highlight of the apples in the center. So, so point to that on the reference picture there? 
See that right there? Oh, yeah. So she was probably uh, shot in a studio with a set of Kinoflow lights mm-hmm. and uh, not actually in the woods. That was probably shopped in. Yep. Nope. I am dealing with that all the time. Yeah. And that's actually really common yep. uh, for, for people to use a green screen room for shooting models and things like that. I'm just getting that next value in on my Apple. You know, if you need a little more color, you can come under here with your alizarin and your blue. There's a little shadow area at the top. I'm going to have to do this. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm, I'm done with it, and then I'm not. I think I'm going to have to come to reality in my life now. The shadow there, shadow there. Now there's a bit of one right here to talk about the core, right? So sort of where the finger is, we want to put a shadow. Push that back in a little ellipse. And when we highlight it, that will help um, create our apple shape. I'm going to go back and forth, streaking back and forth, streaking back and forth. Now I'm going to get into my red and a little of my yellow ochre. We're going to add some of this kind of discoloration you see in apples. Right, so it's still pretty pretty red, but now we're starting to pull the texture. Make our apple feel kind of apple-y. Put in some red red just to be, you know, Hardy about it. And so I'm dry brushing this. I'm wiggling my brush back and forth and barely touching the canvas. That's how I get these little expressive, furtive little strokes. Mm. I'm also paying attention to the directionality of my apple. Right? Last thing I can paint, though, is the stem, because the stem and the hair, well, I might be able to get with it because it comes right there. So you can go right into your brown and maybe your blue. Put an even deeper highlight, low light, and just go tap, 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 tap. And see, that with a highlight will be a stem in two seconds. Cool. Now... We're going to come with just a little of our ochre and dry brush that a couple of places. You can even, if you want to go like really into this, you can add the spots to the apple. We're not going to do that, but, well, I'm not going to do that. You could totally do that if that was something I was in and... You can just see as you just dry brush these tones in, the apple just comes more and more. Yeah, the, the, the yellow just brought a lot of life into that. It just sort of, Whoa. that was amazing. Wasn't that cool? Yeah. All right, so we've got our pad here and a little of our ochre far side of the core. There's a bit of a yellow highlight. I'm going to curve this right here a little bit, just a little bit, I'm right here, just a little bit. Now, and we're like literally almost done. Wow. We're going to take a little zinc. And we're going to come across. Very lightly. I'm 
and then across here. with a focal point at the bottom. Soft, 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 soft. Now I might push some red back into that one with the zinc where it's highlighted, but it's a little more red than it is. I want it to be sort of an out of focus reflection so that I can do some focused reflection. A little of my yellow into my titanium white. There we go. Let's highlight, um, I'm gonna tap that back a little bit. It got a little crazy. Sometimes they do, they get, I get a little crazy. And if it gets away from you, you can always just tap it back. Oh yeah, just more layers. It's more, it doesn't hurt, look. You can just come back and say, nope, nope. Wow, she just looks so neat. I'm gonna add a highlight to my stem. Just making sure it's not, you know, bright saturated yellow. But I want to put a little highlight at the top of it and a bit of one down the stem of it. See it? That's there now? Yeah. My number six brush, or my number four, number six. I'm actually really liking her. Like her little apple, you know. I like her little. Ah, oh, look at her. She's eating apple. Yeah. Don't eat that apple, Red. Well, maybe, maybe she is. Uh, she <laughs> knows something we don't know. Like, ha ha ha! I reversed this spell. As soon as I eat this, it's on you. Who knows? Hope springs eternal. Could be. I'm gonna take my brush in and tint it with a little bit of black. I'm gonna add a bit of zinc to it. I like to use blue in the creation of my very black hair. What I'm trying to say hair is very, very black. Um, I find if I use gray, then it just ages the character. So, by highlighting with um, blue, it just helps me. So again, like we've done in the past, we're just going to pay attention to hair directionality. And I'm just brushing on the edge of my brush. And then we're going to pay attention to stuff like where highlights are. So that we can paint our hair. See how we're just putting that in lightly? Mm hmm. And you could do this with your um, phthalo blue if you had to. It would just be more in that range. And that's just the difference. And that looks like winter right there. So don't feel like, oh no, I'm just like messed up. I'm just trying to make sure we we're showing these these transitions of the flow of the hair. Gonna be quite dark. Just making sure that this is dark where it needs to be dark, right? A little zinc. I'm just gonna pull out a few curls here. I'm just dry brushing and just 
Just a little bit here and there. This is a nice loose portrait. So we should be pretty good just talking loosely about what we have going on. If you need to knock something back, you just come back with the blue and push it back, right? Put out a little more blue and finish your other side, and then we're going to sign her and be done. What do y'all think of that? Oh, awesome. Karen thinks that her, her the, the 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 her eye the 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 brown reddish highlights remind her of a, of an Indian princess. And I was like, oh, oh that's that very is, interesting. I can see I that. Can, ah, that's that's very cool. And that's you know that's one of the amazing things about you know faces and things is there's just such you know small little subtle things can change where we perceive the the person in that picture comes from you know just the colors of eyes or skin or shape of eyebrows cheekbones noses those inform us in so many interesting ways it's true all right my zinc again here and brush a highlight of hair. So the zinc again you can see really helps me in this. There we go. And we're gonna Pop a little of it down here, a little more blue, a little more zinc. I look crazy. Tap off my brush on my towel. Oh, if you ever touch your uh, painting and you're like, wow, that's a little crazier than I meant, tap off on your towel. Right? You don't, you're not stuck anywhere. Going along here. <laughs> I'm chuckling because Amazon's being delivered in the background. <laughs> what? <laughs> Boxes are being rolled in behind us. Oh. <laughs> that's all the, that's all the noise going that's going on back there. You know, you, know, you never know. So I'm going to say that there's a curl here. Oh, yeah. They're, they're definitely interested in that ringlet. I'm going to come in first with my little highlight. Because once I get the highlights in, I can go back and define some of the low lights to make the curl happen but what you actually see in a curl is is the highlights oh and i'll say that we've got some hair coming off here some brighter white but just a couple of places Now we've we've not only had a had a unicorn join us in chat, but uh, a little brush unicorn. A so, little brush unicorn. Yeah. So I you know you know how rare it is to see unicorns. So I always like to to <laughs> spot them when I can. Yeah, you got to see the unicorns when they happen. So high our high fives to our to our spotted little brush unicorn who's joined us today. She's like, nine years old, painting along with us. Oh my gosh, that's wonderful! All right, so I've got that here. I'll come back, making sure that now I've kind of put in my my shape. Your shape. My shape is now made. My blue and white is ready. There we go. Wow. That's how we put in a curl. That turned out really cool. It did. Oh, Julie says this reminds her of Mini Driver. Yes. We used to say the Mini Driver. 
because we she, did. She was the, the mini, mini driver. The mini driver. <laughs> because we, what was the movie that we used to love? Uncorked. Of hers? Uncorked. That was a great movie. I could see myself sitting on top of a. I could see you sitting on top of a thing too. I yeah. wouldn't put up with it, but I could see you trying. I, you know, just give me a moment to have. I'll take a month and be Roman. <laughs> Experience life on top of a of a, a philosophical. Uh, All right. Pole pyre. Let's sign her. All right. This turned out so great, Cinnamon. Everybody's really loves this. They've had a great time coming and hanging out with you. I am so glad you guys had fun. And I hope you, I hope many of you can paint this. I hope you guys are getting the information that you need mm -hmm. to be able to create this for yourself at home because, you know, that's the whole point <laughs> is that you guys get to paint it. Um, I love painting it too. So, you know, it's not like I don't get a benefit. Let me give her a signature. I think I'm going to come right here along the side. So this is my little soapbox when I sign. I like to just think about the piece and make sure that my signature isn't damaging to what I created. What do you mean by that? So like if I were to put in a big yellow signature like horizontally across the bottom of this canvas, that's all you'd see is my big yellow signature. I am Sherpa. Yeah, it would just be ridiculous. And that's all you would ever see from the painting. And that, I guess in some levels, that says that you feel that the artist is more important than the work. Than the work. But, but it, that's not, for sometimes that is the case. Some some cases it's if about Peter the If Peter Max art. wants to do that and he does, that he's Peter Max, so he can do that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, and, and you know, because Paso some... wants to do that, that's fine. But I'm not either one of those people. <laughs> and so my artwork has to survive on its own. Right. Someday when I'm gone, you know, it's got to make its own way into the world. And I want to give it a big yellow signature to hold it back. Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm not Peter Max. <laughs> oh, wow. We've had a huge group of people out here hanging out with the cinema today. It's been fantastic. They have really had a good time. There's been lots and lots of people uh, chatting a long way with us. And I'd like to suggest anyone who's not made it to a live, please come join us. We have so much fun doing this. It is really a lot of fun. We've got some great stuff coming up Thursday. We'll be populating the live, upcoming lives, and the website with that. And then 12 days starts the Saturday after Thanksgiving. Ooh. I will be live every day for 12 days with a new, more spectacular painting than the last. This is the biggest, biggest multi-day live that I've ever gone for. Um, I have a variety of one hoot to three hoot paintings, so there's something for everybody, and I'm trying to make sure that it was like that you would find your happy Christmas image in there. So, yeah, definitely check the description below, check out the website, come back and see us really soon. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and we want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye bye.